I was a bit worried it, it wouldn't fit still, but it's fine. Occasionally, no more than once or twice per week, I like to get my old Cervelo test team kit out and go for a ride. Did I tell you that I used to ride for the, the Cervelo test team? Oh, I did. Anyway, whilst I'm out riding, sometimes I'll think back to my days of racing and pretend to be back there, which basically means pretending to be dropped and trying to chase back on. Now, some of you lovely viewers and followers have been asking in the comments section if you can get more of a background story to the presenter, so I thought I'd volunteer first. So let's go inside, grab a pint and have a chat by the fire. Daniel Lycaboss Lloyd, here are your top 10 questions about your prestigious cycling career. All right. Come on in, hit me with the questions. What was your favourite race? Favourite race? Uh, I generally always say the Tour of Flanders, Ronda van Vlaanderen. In fact, my dog is called Ronda after that race. But actually, lately, I've really started to like the Strada Bianca just from a spectator point of view. It looks spectacular in March there. It's one of the first big races of the year where the classics riders come together. And actually, believe it or not, I did all right there one year. 2009 when I rode for the Cervelo test team. I, I told you, yeah, I told you I rode for them. I was sandwiched in the end between Andy Schleck, who was eighth. He was quite good at the time. I was ninth and Ryder Hedgedale, winner of the Giro d'Italia a few years later, came 10th and said, you know, that day he was absolutely flying. Couldn't have done any more. You got any money, Mike? <laughs> Cheers. What was your first biggest cycling success? First success, uh, well there weren't many of them throughout my career, but I started off as a mountain bike racer when I was about 13 and my first big success I would say was the Southern Area Mountain Bike Championships when I was a junior. I won it off the back of three days at the Junior Tour of Wales the previous week, which was my first ever road race and uh, in my memory at least, I won it by quite some way. Who is your cycling hero? Ooh, that's always a tough one given what we know now and it might be controversial but I have to say my cycling hero, at least when I was growing up, was Frank Vandenbroek. He just looked the essence of cool and power on the bike. You know, he had this hairnet sometimes when he was racing in Belgium. The way he rode in that Vuelta a Spania when he pretty much dropped everyone even though he was riding on the front. He was just the person that I wanted to be and to be honest, looking back, out of the people that were doing really well in that period of time when I was growing up as a cyclist, it's hard to find a hero that perhaps was clean, so I'm going to stick with Frankie. Thanks very much indeed. No problems. Cheers. What do you wish you'd known then that you know now? I wish I'd known at the very, very start of my career how to use and utilise to best effect a power meter. I actually did get one in 2005, I think it was, when I was on a real budget. I couldn't really afford one, but I was over in California and I met a guy called Trent Klasner. If that's not a cool name in itself, he actually lived in a place called Cool in California. Anyway, he was with the Saturn team. They were sponsored by PowerTap. He didn't know how to use it. He probably didn't even know what it was. So I asked if I could buy it off him and he said, yep. Yeah. I said, what price? He said, I don't know how much it's worth. How about 50 bucks? I said, mm, uh, okay. I got one and once I started using a power meter, even though I'd already been racing and training for many, many years, my performances in training and in racing just started to go up over the next three or four years once I'd learned how to use it properly. What was your best moment in cycling? Uh, best moment? Um, I guess I could say reaching the Champs-Élysées at the Tour de France, but from a purely sporting point of view, I'd have to say the 2009 Tour of Qatar. Now, that was the first race that I did with the Cervelo test team. I yeah, I told you. Uh, anyway, we did really, really well in the race as a team and that felt amazing. We won the first stage with my good friend Roger Hammond. Every day we got almost all of our rides into the first echelon. It's a race which is really shaped by crosswinds and race splitting up into echelons. We couldn't overhaul Tom Bonin. He dominated that race as he did for many, many years. But I think we got almost all eight of us in the first 14 overall. I managed to get fourth overall and up there on a couple of stages. And just my memories of that race in particular are really good. What was your biggest regret? Wow, biggest regret? Uh, probably so far in my life, my biggest regret is not being a part of GCN's What Not To Wear video. I mean, 
That was a great chance to show off this body and I, I, I missed it. Right, in all seriousness, I think my biggest regret was not winning the uh, National Elite Road Race Championships. It was always a really big target of mine. It was one of the few races I genuinely thought I could win. I was twice on two occasions. First in 2007, where I was in with David Miller, just myself and him for the last 70 kilometers. Ultimately, he beat me in the sprint. I was also second behind Christian House in 2009. But more importantly, I just beat Pete Kenyuk, the current national champion, and Chris Froome came fourth. There you go. But 2008 sandwiched between those two was my biggest disappointment. I was only fourth, but that was a day where I got into a breakaway and I felt like I was going to win it. In fact, I was confident probably for the only time ever in my road career that I was going to win it. So once I crossed the line, I was in balls of tears because, well, I've been fourth. Where's your favourite place to ride? Right, uh, hard to single it down actually. Uh, I really like Tuscany, there's a massive variation of roads. Mountains aren't too big, they're more like hills. Really loved Boulder actually, I trained there before the Tour of Colorado in 2011. But I'd say recently, Col de la Madone, because I was on an electric bike. What's your favourite training session? Favourite actual training session, if you want that, was... Well, I'm a big advocate of sweet spot. We talk about it on the channel quite a lot, and that's mainly my doing. It's basically that sweet spot just below threshold, which is supposed to give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to training. I used to do four hour training sessions with two lots of half an hour, maybe two lots of 45 minutes at sweet spot at the start and at the finish. And the best ever days that I had, I managed to average 300 watts for the entire four hour session. So about 350 watts for the two sweet spots. And they're off. What's been your favourite GCN moment? Wow, favourite GCN moment. Well, it is as much fun as it looks. I really enjoy working for GCN. Uh, but there's one moment, in fact a whole day, where we decided to do a day in the life of a podium girl at the Vuelta a España in 2013. It never made the light of day. Cristina, Ara, Patricia. Elisa, un saludo para el siguiente de la vuelta de ciclista. You didn't think you'd see my ugly face again, did you? Don't actually know why, but uh, well, it was a great day for me. What exactly does it take to ride like a boss? How do you ride like a boss? Well, that's not easy. I mean, some people are just, you know, natural bosses. But I mean, we've got loads of how-to videos on GCN. You know, if you follow them, adhere our advice, then uh, you too can ride like a boss, maybe. To ride like a boss, click over here. Well, that's about all we've got time for in this particular video, but Matt, Sai, and Lasty, it's your turn next. And be warned, I'll be asking some of the questions.